last time we got all of our partitions set up and ready for a workbench install. So now we're actually going to do the workbench install. So I've again booted with my SD Toolbox disk that I've created. And uh, it, in Workbench 1.3, Amigo S 1.3, there is no standard HD install program. That didn't come until later. So at the time, various uh, adapter manufacturers either made their own or just didn't provide one. Luckily, the actual installation procedure is pretty straightforward. Um, all that we really need to do is we need to copy the contents from a workbench floppy disk onto the partition. And um, that can be achieved with just one command. So first, uh, I, I need to get the volume name of the workbench disk. And the reason I need to do that is I only have one drive. I've kept the other drive disconnected because I needed it for something else. But so now, if I look at the... I have the command line open, and I want to copy everything from workbench 1.3 to workbench. So copy... Workbench 1.3 to Workbench Clone All. Now I'm using the the volume name of the Workbench floppy disk instead of DF0 because I only have one disk drive. So when I run this command, it's going to ask me to insert in my boot disk so it can take the copy program from that into memory. Um, and if I use DF0 or try and copy from the, the, the Parcero SD Toolbox disk, but because I'm specifying the volume name after copies loaded into memory, it'll look for that Workbench 1.3 volume and request it. So if I hit enter, it'll say insert SD Toolbox into any drive, which I will insert in, into my one drive. And then it'll request Workbench 1.3. And the copy will begin. So um, copy with the options clone and all essentially does a recursive copy while keeping all of the file permissions the same. And this is important because uh, there are some files on the workbench disk that have special permissions that require those permissions to work. Um, notably, there's a there's a pure bit that's required on some um, on some binaries. We don't need to go into that in detail now. What's important to understand is that if you omit the clone, um, you may run into issues. So. So copy from your workbench disk to your workbench volume, clone all. This will take a while to execute, so we'll do a cut here and come back when it's finished. Now that copy's finished. So if we wanted to, we could reboot right now, and we could be able to boot into our um, boot from our, our our workbench volume. Because this is a Parcera two, and there's some things about the clock, I want to handle that first before I reboot. So, if you recall from the previous episode, I copied several files, several programs. Uh, from the original Parcero SD card onto my SD Toolbox disk. One of those was the real-time clock program slash driver, right? So the Parcero 2's real-time clock doesn't operate the same as a normal Amiga uh, real-time clock, so it has to have a special program to load and save the date. So before we reboot, so we have our, our date right, Let's copy uh, that RTC program 
from SD Toolbox onto the workbench and then add it into our startup sequence so it sets the, the time at boot. So I'm going to change to workbench C and I'm going to copy SD Toolbox C RTC to here. And that'll, that'll copy the RTC command. I also had a few others that I wanted to uh, keep copies of. That would be ADF to disk, and then disk to ADF. Which will be useful as we start exploring these programs uh, on here. So now I need to add this to the startup sequence. So when the Amiga boots, as part of the boot up process, the Kickstart ROM will look for a bootable volume, and then it will look on the S directory in that bootable volume um, for a file called startup sequence. And if we look here in Workbench S, we'll see a file here called startup sequence. Now we'll go into this some more in a later episode, but for today, um, I'm going to edit this to add the command to load the time from the Parcero's real-time clock. But I want to double check with what the SD Toolbox is doing, so I make the same kind of edits. So I'm going to use the search command to look at the SD Toolbox startup sequence. and see where it's used. So it's only used once and this is on the first line, so on the first line it executes RTC load. Fair enough. So we're going to add that into our startup sequence and I'm going to use the edit editor to do that. Uh, oops, excuse me. I'm going to use the ed editor to do that. Um, getting myself confused here. Ed is a screen editor. It's very similar to uh, VI or Vim on Unix, but it's not a clone of that, but it's similar. Um, it doesn't have a separate edit mode and command mode. It's just automatically in edit mode. Uh, but you can hit escape to get into command mode. And there's a few commands that I know. I don't know this editor particularly well, but I know it well enough to make uh, to make some small edits here and there. Um, so we want to put this RTC load on the first line of our startup sequence. Um, and here there's some comments. We could delete those, but I'm going to leave those later. So the first effective line is here, and we'll do RTC load. That'll load the time from the Parcero's clock and put it into our system clock. And then uh, I like to display the date in the startup sequence so that I can see what time it is. And that should be all that we need to do. So we hit escape and then SA will save this file. And then escape Q will quit from ed. With that done, I'm going to eject our SD toolbox disk and reboot. And this is now looking and booting from our workbench partition that we have set up. Excellent. So, now when we did a copy, we did a copy of everything, including the icon for the the workbench disk. Now I don't I don't want this icon though because this represents a floppy disk. I'd much rather have one of these SD cards. Now if you recall, I saved the SD card icon onto our SD toolbox disk. So I'm going to reinsert that now. And I'm going to copy it from the SD toolbox to this uh, workbench drive. 
Copy from DF0 icons. Actually, I'm going to need to refresh on what it's called. DF0 icons. And we called it sddisk.info. So we want to copy DF0 icons sddisk.info to workbench disk.info. The, the disk.info file is used to represent what the actual uh, volumes icon is. So that's copied over. Uh, now you want to be careful with copying over just arbitrary icons because icons have a have a type. They're either a drawer or a command or or something like that. Um, and disk is a valid type. So, but since we pulled this from another disk, we know it's of the right type. So it's it's a simple thing to copy over. But um, you can't just, for example, take a drawers.info file and copy it to disk.info and expect that to work. Now, what happens when you have a folder named disk? I'm actually not sure, um, but that's, uh, that's another thing for another day. Um, all right, now, unfortunately, on Workbench 1.3, I can't figure out a way to actually refresh the screen so that we see the new icon without rebooting. So in order to see that icon, we're going to have to reboot again. Now that we've rebooted again, we can now see that the uh, workbench icon is now uh, replaced with a nice SD card. And so that is all we had to do to install Workbench. Now, this system isn't configured at all, basically. Uh, so we'll continue on and configure it. But that that wraps this episode for just installing it. So we're we're well on our way. Thanks for watching and, and next time we'll continue on with uh, some other some other software.